Right here. Finally got round to reviewing the Gustafsson windscreen. So this one started life as a it's a 14 or a 15 inch windscreen. And um, shout out to Martin for letting me use your windscreen to give it a test. Uh, Martin's cut it down to actually 11 and a half inches. So 11 and a half inches measuring from here up. And of course, uh, uh, Gustafsson are utilizing the entire width of the fairing, which is interesting. And I did notice that with the uh, Clockworks flare that they didn't use the uh, full range of the fairing and I thought that maybe that they could have and it might have improved things. So this uh, windscreen is sitting just below uh, my nose. Which is um, ideal actually in theory to allow the wind to bounce off the flare and head over your head so let's see how we go when we uh, when we get out of the around town stuff so straight away even though we're only doing 50 k's an hour you can it, they're very noisy so the wind's kind of blowing through the um, the vents here, as you can see these two vents, and um, the wind's kind of rattling around it. So that is kind of noticeable. But I don't mind the look of it actually. It's not a bad looking uh, windscreen, as far as windscreens go. So one of the things um, that I noticed about the Clockworks flare. Uh, was the fact that they didn't utilize the entire width of the fairing and I often wondered why they did that for the sake of a little bit more perspex on either side if it was to aid you know wind deflection which is the whole point of it surely that would have been a good idea and um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes when we get out into the 100 zone as to whether or not it does make much of a difference all right so currently as we stand uh, I've yet to find a windscreen that adequately deflects air away from you as you ride I haven't found one absolutely jackhammering around my helmet so I think the problem here is um, it's the wind coming up underneath the fairing that's got to be the issue so I think adequate wind deflection in the lower part of the motorcycle to prevent that vortex, vortex of wind sort of rattling around inside the windscreen here I'm doing a hundred and um, yeah, I can certainly feel wind banging around my helmet. It's definitely not perfect at all. All right, well, that's disappointing. Um, I really thought that that was gonna work better than it did. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of funny I'm, and I'm kind of torn. Um, so riding around town at 60 k's an hour to even 80 k's an hour, it was fine. It was great. Um, in fact, I could feel a little bit of the wind coming through the vents and, um, and it was kind of refreshing and I honestly thought that it was going to work. But then when we went out to the 100 zone, it was okay kind of around 100, but then once you got past 100 to like 110, forget it. So the, the wind would come around, it would reverberate off my helmet. Um, and it was sort of, it, it was kind of like my helmet started vibrating. Um, and it was kind of funny, you know, you go around a corner and, and then maybe I'd back off back to, you know, there might be a car in front of me and I'd sort of back off to 90. And then all of a sudden it'd be all right again. I'd be like, oh, 
maybe it's okay, you know, and then you, you get an open stretch and you hit 110 again and bang, you got these vibrations and all this sort of stuff and it's just so unpleasant. So, um, it's got to be a no for me for the Gustafsson windshield. Um, now, so this is 11 and a half inches in height. Uh, actually, let me just double check that measurement. Yep, so it measures 11 and a half from the lip of the fairing up to the top, which is 11 and a half inches. So I originally measured um, around about 12 to even maybe 13 inches would be perfect for me. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, whether another half, half an inch, I'm not really sure what that would do. I think the biggest problem of the lot is not just the wind sort of bouncing around here, it's preventing the wind from coming up underneath and then creating this vortex in behind the windscreen. That seems to be the biggest issue. So one option is to get lowers, uh, soft lowers for your crash bar, uh, sorry, for your, um, yeah, for your crash bars. Uh, also Martin, shout out to Martin, by the way, for letting me use your windscreen. Um, Martin has adopted um, some, uh, to use some sort of wind deflectors for his forks and has offered to, for, to let me use them to see what they're like. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, I'm sort of thinking that maybe um, here might be better. It's a bigger area that's covered. And then the wind that's whooshing up from down below might be um, trapped away a bit more effectively. Uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm not sure what to think. So this is the, uh, this is the Gustafsson windshield. Um, now it's an eight inch flare. And you'll notice that um, this isn't as wide as the um, Gustafsson. So the Gustafsson utilizes the, the, the fairing in its entirety. And as you can see there, they've got Perspex right to the end, whereas Clockworks, they don't do that, they stop it here. And they only make one size flare, which is eight inches, whereas obviously Gustafsson do a whole bunch of different um, uh, size measurements. So for me, uh, the, the Clockworks eight inch flare, a definite no-go, didn't work. Um, the vibration out on the highway was just too much and um, it, it just it was intolerable. The Gustafsson windshield wasn't as bad uh, at 100 k's an hour as the um, uh, as the clockworks flare was but once we got past 100 it was just it was game over. Um, so I wouldn't want to go on a on a long haul ride and have that on. It would just it would torture me. I'd end up just I don't know don't know what I'd do, but it would absolutely torture me. Um, I couldn't do it. So and of course you know as well like there are lots of factors in this rider height in relation to the height of the windscreen obviously is a big factor. Um, the seat that you're sitting on will determine the height of the seat, which will determine the height of you. Um, the handlebars that you're using, so your, your stance on the bike, so you, which, which, which will relate to your position and your comfort. Um, and then of course, you know, what direction the wind's blowing in, how fierce the wind is. So many, so many variables and so many factors that in the end, you know, the joy of riding a motorcycle really is that you're, you've got your knees in the breeze, enjoying your ride, irrespective of whether it's windy or whether it's, you know, blowing a gale or, or whatever's happening. And because I just couldn't get or find a windscreen that would adequately suit my needs or adequately just deflect wind from around me, I've just, as most of you who are following the channel will know, I've just opted for no fairing and no windshield at all. And I find that the clean air all around me uh, doesn't sort of buffer me and knock me around as much because it's kind of consistent airflow all around. So yeah, you're not blocking the wind at all, but you're allowing all the air to come through you and it's just cleaner. So the only other option left for me now is to try a windscreen that actually goes physically above my helmet. So sitting on the bike, it would probably have to be an eight, I think there's a Gustafsson 18 inch flare or any windscreen that would go to about 17 or 18 inches to completely cover my field of vision. 
and then it would have to be obviously it would have to be a clear windscreen and um, just to make sure that I could see and even though I do ride with a tinted visor and it doesn't feel too bad but I don't think I'd be very comfortable with a tinted um, windscreen um, so just to see if a windscreen above my field of vision completely covering my helmet and covering me would be enough to a send wind right over my helmet not not sort of from down low and above but actually from right above my helmet send the wind over and then how much that would play in relation to wind coming up from underneath i don't know it could be interesting but you know really and truly if i can find a windscreen that can do that i would love to give it a go um i don't hold out great hopes for it all right all right that's it guys and uh, that's it for me from this video um thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I shed some light on windshields in both this video and a couple of the previous videos. Um, of course, you remember the previous video um, where I discussed windshields and fairings, and I test rode with the fairing with the, with the Harley Davidson stock windshield, and then also I, I test rode the uh, Clockworks windshield, and I also rode without it. That's an interesting video if you want to watch that. I'll link below. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that it really is worth this whole battle and this whole conversation about having a windscreen or should we just get rid of them and just have your knees in the breeze and just ride like God intended? I don't know. For now, I'm going no fairing, no windscreen, knees in the breeze and loving it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.